So, you are here to learn about neural networks. You may have heard that neural networks are inspired by the brain, but if we delve deeper into how it actually works, what purpose does it have, and how can I do something useful with them, we most likely will get caught up in a web of confusing terms, math equations, diagrams, and stuff. Ugh, very confusing. So instead, let's try something different. Let me introduce you to Bob. Bob, along with his friends, have just started work at Random Corp. They all work in different levels in the factory and perform similar jobs. Bob works at level one, but as you can see, this company consists of many levels. Bob has no one reporting to him, but reports to lots of people on the next floor. Like those folk on level two who report to those on level three and all the way to the top floor. But let's go back to Bob. He, along with his mates at level one, need to do a task for which they have no previous experience. Given some input, Bob has to make it into something that will impress his supervisors. Ah, nice work! Bob then passes his piece of work to his supervisors on the level above, as do all his mates in level one. The system used in this company determines who connects with who between the levels. This system can be changed and altered as much as you like in order to get the best outcome which is an awesome product, of course. Up on level two, people are receiving work from all over the lower floor. Each person then sums up the collective contributions and weight them based on how much they like those employees and, to be honest, their personal bias. Once they have made some kind of product based on the weighted sum of the contributions, they select the things that make them happy and remove the things they don't like. Hey, that looks good! Once done, they pass the result to their supervisors on level 3. Up on level 3, yes, the same thing happens again. More collective summation, keeping the stuff you like and reporting upwards. And the same goes on all the way up to the top. Now, at the penultimate floor, our top management team is ready to present their finished products to the big boss on the top floor. This person is in charge of putting all of the final products on display for everyone to see. She then collects feedback on which products sold best, which ones did just okay, and which ones were total failures. Yeah, they really messed up that one. After analyzing the feedback, she proceeds to pay the people in the top management team according to how good their products sold. She rewards the most money to the one who gave her the most successful model, then a smaller reward to the one who gave him the average product, and nothing to the one who presented the failed product. Sorry, mate. The top management team then proceeds to do the same with the workers in the level below. They pass on part of their earnings to the ones who passed on their work to them. This happens all the way down to the bottom floor. As we can see, the ones who were involved in designing the best product got paid better than those who weren't. At each level, the people in charge tell the people who report to them what worked well in the summed design and how they can modify their contribution slightly to make it better. So those that did well are encouraged to carry on doing something similar. And those that did badly are told the general direction they need to improve. This may seem like a crazy place to work at, but it's surprising how this organization learns. This way, we can create many different connections between workers, and we end up with many types of cool products. Now that you have seen how Random Corp works, you may ask what would happen if we changed some things. Say, add stairs from level 1 to level 3, so Bob can talk to his boss's boss. You know, just so they better understand his contribution. If your brain is going, yeah, but what if, maybe if you did this or changed that, then congratulations, you have taken the first steps in thinking about the components of a neural network. So, if you think about it, the way neurons connect in a network, 
transferring information between each other to understand and learn things is similar to how the workers at the factory connect and influence each other to create newer and better products. That's why we call this kind of system a neural network.